So this is Pahia where we're on a mooring at the moment. There's mountain bike trails really close, so I'm in heaven and really cool access, easy to get into town. Much more happening than over in Opua we thought. Lonely, I am so lonely. So I'm hanging out on Rome all on my own at the moment. Michael's going back to work for a, a couple of weeks. So this is it, looking after Rome. I'm lucky that I've got Russell and Corinne who we've met since we've been here in Pahia and they've assured me that if I need their help then they're right there. Uh, we first cleared in to New Zealand in Opua and that night we went to a barbecue for the cruisers. We were really excited, go see what's happening in town and that's where we met Russell from OC Tenders. Uh, we'd seen the OC Tender and thought that it was a really cool product, super lightweight, impressed by the way that it's constructed. We had some work to do on our tillers, a couple of little stress fractures in them. So Michael asked Russ if we could go up to his workshop. We fixed up the tillers stronger than ever. Russell wouldn't take anything. So we thought, what can we do? And we really wanted to repay these guys and do something for them. So we decided to make a video. So hopefully the video gives you a bit of an insight into the construction behind the tenders. We take you behind the scenes to have a look for yourselves. We hope you enjoy it. Have a watch and thanks Russell and Corinne so much for helping us out. Cheers! Hi, I'm Liz from Sail Surf Rome. In this video, Mick and I take you to OC Tenders. We introduce you to the family-run business, take you into the workshop, and meet the passionate people behind this high-quality, custom-built tender. I'm going to meet Russ and Corinne from OC Tenders. Yep, call in on their house and see the see what's going on. The office. Come on in. Good morning. <laughs> morning, Russ. Morning. How are you guys? You well? Good. Sewing department. OC Tenders is the head office, so if you're talking to us, that's where everything's coming from. My name's Brisa. Hello, my name is Celia. Hi, I'm Russell from uh, OC Tenders. I needed a lightweight tender because I needed to go from my garage just there, and the water is just about 80 metres there, so I needed a light enough tender that I could get down to the beach to go to my cruising boat. And all of the all your tenders are made here in Pahia? Yeah, all our tenders are made uh, in our workshop up the road here. It's pretty close to come home for lunch and our boat's just parked, uh, that's our boat just there. So this is where the dream started? Pretty much, this is where the dream started. So how long were you and Corinne sailing for? Uh, we lived on the boat for seven years. We've been back home working uh, on the OC tender plan for the last oh, three and a half years. Cruising round, I bought a um, brand new inflatable when I left New Zealand and the logos fell off in three months all the handles fell off the Rolex fell off and Rolex falling off is just a safety issue I reckon is, is this the industry standard is this what everyone uses and that's what everyone uses and I was just like okay well let's try an alternative so I've got Corinne here she's the the lady behind the scenes that if you uh, jump on the phone or on the email she'll be answering you. That's me. I'm on yeah. the other side of the computer on the other side of the phone and telling him and what to do. Yeah. Yeah. And when she first started she was like how can I talk to these skippers? I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm like Corinne you've been you've had a dinghy for seven years you know everything that's wrong with them everything that's right. For them. We basically start out with um, 10 mil PVC foam which we buy from Italy um, comes in sheets and then we cut, we've got templates and we cut it out. The transoms are quite thick and they've got different um, layers of, uh, of foam, different densities. So, and we actually build our boat over um, a male mould. So come on, I'll show you the mould. The front is a pretty classy, um, classic dinghy shape. It's uh, plumb bow, I love plumb bow boats. It's pretty sharp so it's got a nice entry. But it's from basically there, it's flat because I want it to play nearly with a small outboard. So to be fair to say you could go down at least one, maybe two size outboards from an inflatable dinghy? Yeah, because we've got sharp edges. You know, we've, got, we've basically got a, a pretty flat bottom boat. Um, so we've got sharp release edges so it actually gets up and planes early. Everyone's gone towards um, inflatable dinghies with big outboards to get them up on the plane. Whereas uh, we're sort of tending to go back the other way and go to a lightweight tender. I can get this, the, the three metre one on the plane with the three horsepower with the tiller extension. Our family, we use a three horsepower um, uh, outboard or an eight if we need to do some missioning, but we don't need 15s. A smaller outboard's less fuel consumption, 
less fuel to carry around, less emissions. Less fuel to source when you're in the islands. So yeah. basically what we do is we, uh, we, we build the boat inside out. So we, put, uh, we spray gel coat, uh, we laminate with this cloth here. Um, 600 gram double bias and then we strengthen with, with tons of carbon carbon units that we use around the transom um, carbon is just like a, is, is a cloth like anything else um, except for the same weight it's three times as strong all our molds are CNC milled pop out of the uh, of the mold like that and then we do a bit of a model Ford uh, model T Ford philosophy where we build the deck complete including everything. You can see our use of carbon everywhere, basically that's the deck ring frame there, so it's all got carbon unis inside and out. That's where the compression post goes on, our Rolex are never going to fall off because that's a solid um, uh, H100 Divinicel block there. This is the spring for the handles, um, so when you pull the handles, the handles fall in and out, go in and out. This component here weighs 11 kilos, so it's pretty much ready to go, it's got the non-skid already on it. And the bags are already in, the pretty logo's already on. And we're the first Aussies allowed in the shed? No Aussies <laughs> are allowed in the shed, mate. No yeah, Aussies are allowed in the shed. Tasmania, thieving, you don't count. They're <laughs> a thieving bunch of mongrels, always have been, had, always will be. We had to wear our <laughs> Team New Zealand socks so we weren't allowed in. <laughs> but hey, and the number one thing, never let your friends know that you have that you work with fiberglass because they bring all sorts of things down to be repaired. <laughs> <laughs> Balance bites, kayaks. <laughs> Don't worry, we won't expose your uh, location. <laughs> yeah. But the inside is pretty much done. It comes off the mould and because you're always looking into a dinghy, so it's a finished product once we pop it off the mould. Carbon through hull fittings. See where um, we make the boat strong. So this is all the carbon running down through here. This is all the carbon through here. here. The edge is obviously really important because that's where you're gonna, you're gonna ding stuff. So it's just like a surfboard, all the, all the cloth is lapped over on the edge. The pain about this system is everything has to be feared and painted so once it's laminated um, you've got we've got to bog it and sand it and paint it and undercoat it so yeah it's uh, time consuming and expensive that's no, just, that's no different to building a full-size yacht same mate, material same method uh, it's a race yacht of a different shape that's all it is it's the same construction um, you can see the the transom that I showed you you got your carbon unis in there you got your carbon unis in there they wrap around there they wrap around there on the on the inside so it's fully sandwiched that transom's never going to fall off, never. We use West System Epoxy on all our boats, I don't like polyester. What is that? So, where are we up to now? We're just putting the, the cover and stuff on this. Here's the rub rail. That's the same foam that is in um, life jackets. That you, most life jackets, the cover takes about 10 minutes to put on and two minutes to take off, so if you get a tear, you can fix it. So, I, protection for your own boat with your... Yeah, protection for the main boat, really. Yeah. Uh, obviously, extra flotation as well. Frequently asked questions about your features on the boat. Two roller positions. Where's your seat? There's no, there's no thwart seat in this boat because I don't want to muck up the cargo space. So um, this is our trusty seat block from the front rowing position. You row from there. And the rear row position on your own. You row from there. Put that out of the way. Up Plenty of room there. for surfboards. Plenty of room for surfboards. <laughs> Basically, there's just so there's, there's room because there's no tubes. The storage bags basically are on shop boards, so you can just pull it down, shove some stuff in there, and let it go, and all we'll pull it. And it's dry because it's not touching the floor. That's a tank um, bulkhead there. Um, so basically, put your petrol tank up in there, and then just um, hook it on there, and the tank stays up well forward, trim the nose down. And that's it fits nice, and it holds very, very good. These bonded too, so you know penetrations to your foam. Yeah, I don't like putting holes in uh, foam sandwich, so basically we make up these, these are carbon pad eyes here. Yeah, they're nice little pad eyes, and then we just glue them on anywhere we need to have a fixing point. More race boat technology going into a tender. Wow, mate, it's just, it's just, if you're going to do it, you might as well use good materials. So if you're going to have oars, have a decent set of oars. I bring uh, Rolex in from Aussie. Good quality well. Aussie we do Aussie yeah, made in mate. Australia, Look, don't get Australia, confused. It's only the oil that's just the thing. All of it is made in Australia. <laughs> Everything else is made in New Zealand. Well, there you go. <laughs> there is a piece of shot cord and they just hook up. Ah, the no wonder they didn't realise they can't find their oars. Where's the oars? Head? We've also got a compression post. Uh, there, which basically just stiffens the whole the decks up. That's yeah. the main seat for everyone sitting in the dinghy right along the gunnel here. We promote our guys to have with their outboards um, use a tiller extension. Yep. Um, use this as a centre console. 
Um, it's a boat. Trim, sit in the boat. Trim yep. it like a boat. So basically, the the skipper and his crew are sitting in the middle of the boat, um, sent to console style. And when they need it to turn it into a cargo boat, they'll put their seat block away, and then all of a sudden, it's got cargo space again. Because one of the things we always had, we had a lot of people visiting that didn't know anything about boats. So they hop on a tender, on a dinghy, and have no idea where to sit. And we've got one, one, two, three, four, on a 350. We've got this six where, of them. Yeah. So that's where you plonk your bum, right on the dot. So that saved us a lot of hassle. We trimmed the boat straight away. And you know, and the and the and the captain doesn't come across as a absolute, you know. It was one of those little things that we picked up from cruising. This has been ongoing. Uh, we offer a full non-skid version as well, a bit more protection. Um, and this stuff's expensive, but basically, on my old tender, I had my old tender for eight years, and this stuff is still as good as the day it went on. So that's why we use this stuff here. We've got tons of lifting points. Ev everyone's got a different set of davits. You no know, stainless steel. Um, D's and pad eyes and stuff so we glass uh, pieces of tube in, in the boat during the build that's one lifting point there there's another lifting point position here there's also another set of tubes so basically we can move these ropes back to here and have the lifting point for, depending on the spacing of the davits there's our other lifting points there there and there like that we come to the anchor bag Basically, we've got a hole in the bottom of the bag. Oh, there's a hole in the bottom of the bag. Well, the hole in the bottom of the bag is for your anchor road to go through, and the through hull fitting, uh, where the handles are here, uh, where that tube goes through. Uh, but basically, that tube that's there is also through the middle of the boat right there. So our anchor road is attached to there. Our paint is attached to there also, so the painter can come out of the hole in the bag right there. So the painter goes to the dock, but when you're finished with your painter, your painter goes back into the bag, which means no there's no painter hanging over the front of the boat that can sneak under the boat and go into the propeller. Anchor road, chain, anchor, painter on top, jandals on top, done. So we've basically got handles there. We've got, it's, it's just flexibility. You can do a lift point from here, you can do a lift point from here. We do offer options like these guys wanted uh, fishing rod holders. Uh, so we bang those in there and there. Uh, comes with a set of Beachmaster wheels. So we just put them on in the factory. As a standard boat, we do a uh, 1.6 alloy plate about that big so you know when you're dragging your dinghy out the beach you just lift the bow and you can drag it up and it's not going to wear the bum out. We do another option where uh, we put alloy right through on the whole drag area on the whole flat panel. It adds a bit of weight but obviously mate you're not going to you're not going to wear that, that out in a hurry. You do a lot of custom builds for people and lots of different options but your basic range what are your sizes? Four different sizes from uh, 2.7, 270. 270, 300, uh, 330 and 350 and we've also, don't want to say too much about it but basically we've got a 4 metre um, uh, tender CNC modelled already but not, no moulds built yet but uh, hence our heading towards centre console. Options yeah and we're not even going to talk about the sailing version. Okay, this is our first uh, sailing version that was made for Hamish Wilcox. Uh, at the moment it's all dismantled, but you can see where the centre board goes. Yeah, cool. And the centre case, that's where the mast goes. We've got a double rudder system, meaning you can keep your outboard on. It's not only a sailing, a toy, a fun boat, it is also a safe boat, because wherever you go, you know you can come back if you carry your outboard as well. And you've got your oars, which is absolutely key. The repairability of it so if you if you do have a little ding or or you know scratch or whatever like you would your surfboard then you can repair it this boat can be fixed with anything that you've got on your main boat fixing your main boat you know yeah. from a bit of epoxy to you know a piece of sticky back you know if it's got a hole it's t the hull's 10 mil thick yeah. the foam is closed cell no water's going to get in Get a piece of vinyl get a piece of sticky back just put it over the hole you know in 10 years time or in five years time Take it to a boat builder and say, hey, can you repaint the bottom of that boat? Yeah, sweet as. I had a customer who's, um, he's had his boat now for three years, and he brought it down to shed the other things for us. Can you just give it a bit of a tidy up? We spent three hours on it. He took it back to the marina, and there were other skippers asking him, did those guys just give you a new boat? 
Yeah. It's just like, I mean, it was just a cut and a polish and fix a few gel coat dings and it was nothing major. Yeah. Come on, Lisa, pop your head. Snatch it. <laughs> it's pretty basic how you put it slight in and out. The process is uh, yeah, the little boat. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Bolt and I do not do the sewing. Russell does it. <laughs> believe it or not. Complete. Complete. Another OC tender loaded up, ready to leave the facility. What do we call it? Development centre. <laughs> Hopefully this little video answers a few of your initial questions about the OC tenders. Otherwise you'll be uh, dropping an email to carry in and these guys will be able to sort you out with your new daily driver. Cheers See you later. Thank awesome. you. <laughs> Thanks for showing Cheers Russ. Cheers for helping us out Thanks, this week. And no worries. Rome's been doing a bit of composite work in the OC tender facility this week as well. A little repair job that Russ helped us out with. So. Hopefully this video helps them out. Corinne and Russ have been looking after us. Home cooked meals. <laughs> hey, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all part of the job. And it's all part of the fun of meeting new people. Yeah. That's true. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> okay, bye. Oh. Cool. Awesome. So we've got a OC tender. The tender for cruisers and sailors. <laughs> You'll right, buy hopefully. cruisers and sailors. <laughs>All of us are in this project together, all the skippers, this is not my idea, this is this is a, hundreds of guys' ideas, I just happen to be the guy that's listening, and I just happen to be the guy that can work with fiberglass, and that's basically how it's, how it's worked out. Yeah. So the guys keep on offering advice to us, which is great. Yeah, yeah. awesome, so. come up with a really good product. It's a great product for the ladies too, you know, you always felt that you're so reliant on, on your men to be driving your dinghy and stuff, and with this standards I totally believe that now we are fully self-sufficient, we can do, we can handle, we can go anywhere and come back. Unstoppable. <laughs> Unstoppable. We are going to conquer the world. <laughs>